Welcome back. Today we are discussing the internal rate of return, uh, also known as IRR. This approach is an alternative to NPV, and it's one of those in which we are able to use these two methods complementary to determine if this is a project that we want to go after or not. Okay. So the first thing we need to look at here is we need to start this by start this with an examination of the basic NPV formula which is given by this formula here. Okay. Uh, the one difference here from the MPV formula is that instead of the R, we have substituted the IRR. Now with MPV, if you recall, is that we gave that what our required return was, and then we stuck that in and we saw if that was a positive value or not. Now the IRR approach uses basically the same exact math, but it just does it in a little bit different manner. What we're looking at here is that we take our MPV and we take this entire equation here and we set it equal to zero. Okay. And so what we're doing here is that we have our, uh, our, we take our initial cash flow, we look at all our future cash flows, and then we set it equal to zero and that essentially tells us where it's going to break even at our require, required rate of return. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this equation, which is basically restating that, that first equation that we just popped up there, and it's just inputting all of these things in there. So we take our initial cash outlay, we look at all our future cash inflows, and then we solve for IRR. We solve for what the rate of return is that will make this project at an MPV of zero. What we do after that is that we take that IRR and we compare that to our required return. Okay, so the basic rule here is that we look at the IRR, and if the IRR is greater than my required return, then we will do it, right? The rate of, rate of return on this project, IRR is greater than R, our required rate of return, okay, then we will do it, okay? And so this is basically another way that we are able to look at it. All right, now looking at the same data that we worked with with the MPV project, we have project A and project B. We came up with MPVs on them before, and we had basically a decision about which project we wanted to do. Now we can also look at this using the IRR rule. Okay, so we have our project A, project B, and we're going to set everything up in our... Uh, but the major difference between IRR and MPV is that we are not adding the cash flow in year zero to year one is that we are setting it equal to each other here. And then we are discounting it, okay? And our discounts here are gonna look just like this, one plus IRR to the first, one plus IRR to the second, one plus IRR to the third, and one plus IRR to the fourth, okay? And what we're doing now is that we are solving for IRR. The next lecture is actually going to tell us how to use our financial calculator uh, in order to, to solve for this IRR component. An IRR of 13.1%. Okay, so that is the rate at which we would break even. That would give us an NPV of zero. So any required return that is higher than 13.1%. Okay, if my required return is 15% and this project is generating for me 13%, will I do this project? No, right? Because it's not getting the amount that I require. Okay, however, if my required return is, say, 10%, right? I only need 10% on my money in order to do this project, given its risk and whatnot, then yes, I will do this project. Because it's returning to me 13%, I only need 10%, okay? So we're also going to set this up in the same way for project B, and it's going to look like this, which looks exactly the same as project A's setup, right? We just move the numbers around, we set the future cash flows equal to the current cash outlay, and then we are solving for IRR, which is 11.4%, right? So we have an IRR of 11.4%, and this is giving us some information as to whether we should do the project or not, right? The last example we had, we had a, uh, a required return of 10%. So would we do these projects? 
if, if, we, if they're independent, we can do both of them, then yes, we're going to do project A because project A has a return of 13.1% and we require 10%. Project B has a return of 11.4%. We require 10%. Are we going to do it? Absolutely, right? We're going to do it because both of them have a return that is greater than 10%. So both of them, yes, we are going to do both projects. Since these projects are independent, we are going to do both of them. However, if they are mutually exclusive, which of these projects should we do? Okay, if they're both given the same amount of risk, is that we should do project A, right? If they're mutually exclusive, we cannot do both of them. We should do project A because project A has a higher rate of return, right? As investors, as managers, as companies, we're always seeking the most money possible. All right, so what's the rationale for using IRR? Okay, so why might we look at this? Why might it tell us a little bit different information than the NPV? Well, quite simply is that whenever we're looking at these projects and we're determining if we're going to do them or not, is that we have a minimum amount of return that we need in order to compensate shareholders. That might be this amount at 10%, right? That might be what my shareholders require. And I just, I have to get 10% back at a minimum in order to satisfy my shareholders. Okay. So if I'm looking at this project and it is going to generate for me 13.1%, that means that there is 3.1% excess that is made now available to shareholders. So if I require 10% to pay back my shareholders and I'm able to generate 13.1% in return for my company, then that means that I'm going to have an additional 3.1%. My firm is now more profitable and my shareholders are going to be happy about that. Okay. So uh, this was basically a quick overview of what IRR is. Um, there's going to be some lectures coming up that actually show you how to calculate this and, and plug it into a financial calculator as well as in an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, there's a number of different ways we can do this and then we're going to be getting into making some additional decision rules as to how we incorporate all of this information.